Let's explore the potential impact of Belt and Road across the Americas with Eric Farnsworth. He's the Vice President of the Council of the, Ameri of the Americas. And Jim Spellman, my colleague, joins me as well. Um, Eric, let me begin with you on what we just heard in that package. It's clearly, China is heavily um, invested in South America. And while the region is really not part of the Belt and Road Initiative, isn't it accurate to say that to some extent, China is already doing it in South America and Latin America. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, China's entry into Latin America and the Western Hemisphere has really been one of the primary changes that we've seen for the region this century. It's made a dramatic impact. And as you quite accurately say, Belt and Road may not be directly implicating Latin America in some way, but the vision behind Belt and Road clearly is something that China's been pursuing for a long time in the Western Hemisphere, whether it's investment in infrastructure or trade uh, relations. This is a very important aspect of what we're seeing across the region. Jim? Eric, are there lessons here from Chinese investment in Africa that can be applied in South America, both for the Chinese as well as the countries in South America? Yeah, it's a really important question because the Chinese activity in Africa has existed for a longer period of time. And so there are lessons that have been learned. Initially, what we saw is the investment model that was utilized in Africa was tried to be transported into Latin America. And that doesn't necessarily work because there are different institutions in Latin America, different expectations, different history. But what we have also seen is that Chinese investment has gone up a learning curve. And so as the uh, country is more engaged in the region, uh, we're seeing some key learnings that benefit, I think, uh, both the investor and also the countries where the investments are being made. And I want to ask you a question about Venezuela. A top diplomat who went to the Belt and Road Initiative issued a statement saying, we wish for those other countries in the world not to make any obstacles to the success of this initiative. What does this mean in terms of socialist governments like the ones in Venezuela, a country in political and economic crisis, no food on grocery store shelves, so if I'm living in Venezuela, frankly, do I care about this initiative? Well, you probably don't. You probably care about feeding your family, getting health care, and frankly, uh, having democracy and freedom restored uh, to Venezuela. Venezuela is a country that's in real crisis, humanitarian crisis. We're seeing people flows into Colombia, into Brazil, into the Caribbean with uh, Aruba and Curacao. It's a country that the government is clearly taken in the wrong direction, and it's going to require some sort of change uh, politically for Venezuela to get back on track. Even then, uh, an economic recovery in Venezuela is going to take some time because the primary engine of recovery would be the energy sector, oil specifically. And oil isn't something you can just turn the switch on and have it all of a sudden flow uh, freely again. It takes billions of dollars of investment. It takes human capital. It takes a lot of infrastructure that has to be redeveloped. So even if there was a political uh, change or fix today, which there won't be, but even if there were, it would take a significant period of time to get the economy back on track. Meanwhile, the Venezuelan people, as you correctly say, are are desperate for change because their lives are, are really in a bad place. How does having so much Chinese investment so many places around the world and specifically in South America, how does that, uh, what kind of environment does that create if there's another global downturn like we saw in 2008? You know, it's really interesting the implications that it has. It has a, a broad implication in terms of diversification for the Western Hemisphere, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, people in Washington sometimes think that it is. It's not. During the downturn of 2008, 2009, it was trade with China that actually kept the commodities producing countries of South America out of recession and kept them in terms of positive growth. So that's a positive thing. But what we've also seen is that the nature of trade uh, sometimes works against the Latin American countries, in particular if it causes them to be producers of primary products and not allow them necessarily to go up the value-added chain and to increase innovation and such. So what we'd like to see in terms of the next stage of Chinese engagement with Latin America would really be a focus on such things, not just on building stuff and trading and commodities, but also investing in research and development. Let me give you an example. South America in particular has huge deposits of lithium, whether it's in Bolivia, Argentina, Chile, and both the leaders of Argentina and Chile are in uh, China right now with Belt and Road. Instead of just buying lithium, which is a key component in terms of battery production, why not invest in development of battery technology in the countries of South America and work together to develop uh, uh, batteries that really work in terms of the new um, uh, conditions for transportation and all of the things that battery technology are going to be required to do. This is something that I think is win-win. Uh, I think the countries of the region would really appreciate that type of approach. And win-win, obviously, is China's goal Absolutely. through this whole project. Yep. All right, Eric Farnsworth, Jim Spellman, thank you to you both.